Welcome to EE391 MM391 Maintenance, Reliability and Engineering Economics. Uh, can you all hear me? Can somebody give me an indication that you can hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, okay. All right. Uh, let us uh, begin our lecture. Um, the first uh, point is, um, I just want to make a class announcement. You've got a 15%, a 15% uh, uh, worth of, um, uh, what do you call, 15% uh, worth of, uh, worth of uh, a coursework, which is uh, to be done in engineering economics. You know, it says quizzes and uh, short tests. Yeah, quizzes and short tests. So what I will be giving you is very short assignments. Basically, when you attend your lecture, you will be required to uh, you will be required to write your lecture, not type. You'll be required to write your lecture and uh, and upload this uh, on a weekly basis. So uh, week ten, week eleven, week twelve week 13 all right so you will have to watch the lecture videos the these videos our our either you attend the lecture uh, live that's fine or you uh, or you uh, watch the videos on youtube i've uploaded all the videos straight after the lecture i up to i always up to upload the videos on youtube um and um, um uh, you will be given marks for writing lecture notes so this is uh, uh, what uh, the name of the assignment is lecture transcripts okay lecture transcripts okay because i understand i was going and that that will be worth about uh, about 10 percent and i will also give so it'll be it'll have a weight of 10 percent all right and then there'll be a five percent uh, test there'll be a test which will be five percent all right so total total equals 15 percent which is uh, from engineering economics all right okay guys can you hear me can somebody uh, if you've got any question with regard to this particular assignment uh what about week eight and nine no week eight we might not touch much much on week eight it'll be it'll start from week nine all right so it'll be week nine week nine week ten week 11 week 12 week 13 somewhere around there and not some not all but some part some part of week 14 all right some part of week week 14 some part of week 14 all right uh, guys can somebody just uh, say something on the mic so that i can i'm not sure if i can hear you Hafiz, can you just say something on the mic, please? Oh, Bhavish? Clear, sir. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. All right, all right. So, once again, let me just repeat what the assignment is about. Assignment is really easy. I'm not going to give you a brand new question. If you notice, uh, guys, if you notice, our lectures are like tutorials. Our lectures are like tutorials. Have you noticed that we give the same sort of uh, uh, we are giving the same um, uh, you know we are delivering the lectures in a tutorial uh, fashion we are doing problem after problem and the complexity of the problem gets more difficult now starting week nine week nine was the really basic part we touched remember we only had two lectures in week nine uh, week nine only had two lectures then week 10, we're okay. Week 11, I think, is next week Diwali, by the way. Can somebody confirm to me which week is Diwali? Is it week 11 or week 12? Uh, Bhavish? Week. Sorry? Next week. Next week, week 11. And which day will that fall on? Diwali will be on which day? Thursday okay so we won't 
we will not be missing any lectures, eh? All right, okay. Um, all right, Diwali is on Thursday because our lectures are on Monday, Tuesday, and Friday. Our tutorial is when? When, when are our tutorials, guys? Wednesday. Wednesday, right? Okay, so nothing will be affected by Diwali. All right. Tuesday. Uh, Thursday. Okay, so our tutorial will be affected by Diwali. All right. Okay. So uh, what we will be, what the assignment is about? This lecture transcript. The assignment. I don't know if you can see my thing. Assignment is on lecture transcripts and selected tutorial problems. Okay. Uh, you will be given some lecture transcripts. Like for example, I will say. Uh, for this submission, every week there'll be a weekly submission. There'll be there'll be drop boxes open. You have to submit week nine lecture two, week nine lecture three, and the following questions from the tutorial. So if you submit it, and the submission is like this, you have to write your lecture in your exercise book, right? You have to write the problem in your exercise, not the question, the solution, right? Take a picture, and then upload the picture onto, upload the picture onto the Moodle shell, onto the drop box. Right, very simple. You don't have to do much, much uh, difficulty over here. It's not much difficult. It's very simple. All I want is for you guys to uh, to attend the lectures. Either you attend it live in session on Zoom, or you watch the videos which I'm already posting on YouTube. All right, you may have found already so many of my videos are already available. All right, and this is a similar like this similar assignment which I give at second year level and all that. All right. Uh, because this uh, course it will start to get more difficult all right guys I'm gonna put a, a brief instruction sheet I will put a brief instruction sheet as to how you can go about um, doing this particular doing this particular assignment all right uh, uh, you know what what the rules are and so forth some of the rules will be it has to be handwritten no typing all right okay uh, and your name and student number has to be written and so far. And the moment you submit and everything is in order, you will get automatically, you will get the marks, right? So that will be about 10 to 12%. We'll have a mini quiz, but because of the circumstances, we're not uh, doing many quizzes in this case because there is, it's open to uh, copying. So we just wanted to give you uh, a relaxed assignment uh, uh, for you to do. All right, guys, uh, without much ado, I would like to begin today's lecture. Uh, I'm going to share the screen now. Bhavish, uh, can you just guide me? Uh, are you able to? Uh, are you able to see the screen, Mr. Bhavish? Uh, or oh, Hafiz? Yes. You guys? Yeah. All right. Okay. All right. Okay. Uh, so uh, the first thing, the first point was um, we have a assignment. All right. Uh, the the topic for today, guys. The topic for today. Um, you see, last week. If you look at last week, we looked at a number of problems, right? We looked at a number of problems, very basic sort of problems, right? The most difficult problem we did was problem number four, where we were, where we, where our interest was being compounded on a quarterly basis, all right? Now today I want to introduce you to a new term. The new word uh, for the day, for the day is something called annuity, right? The new title for for today is. Uh, something called uh, annuity all right okay let me just tell these details to be up uh, to be posted on Moodle all right okay okay now the topic for today is something called annuity now what does the word annuity mean all right what does the word annuity mean well, basically, uh, annuity is um, is when you make a regular deposit. There's two things. Annuity can be in two directions, right? Annuity can be in two directions. Firstly, annuity can be in the um, in the direction of of the uh, of money going in, right? Annuity can be money coming in into your account. So basically, let's say you are receiving some sort of income every every so often, 
that is that is one way to look at annuity another way to look at annuity another way to look at annuity is uh, is money going out now the two things which I want to mention over here is number one whenever you talk about annuity the money going out let's say you have to make a regular payment to courts right let's say you buy a television set from courts and uh, you buy it on uh, you know on terms and condition what they call higher purchase right so you make a payment of let's say $150 per month for two years your annuity is $150 do you notice that the amount is always constant the amount is always constant now another way right and the other, the other point is annuity the amount is always constant and the other thing is it is made at a regular interval so either you are paying on a monthly basis or you are paying on a, on a quarter I mean two monthly basis but you are paying it on a monthly basis right okay now the other way to look at annuity is annuity can be money going that was money going out annuity can be money coming in let's say if you're a landlord right let's say if you're a landlord and you are always um, let's say you're a landlord and you uh, and you receive rent on a monthly basis let's say you're receiving five hundred dollars rent because some tenants have have leased out your your apartment so you will receive five hundred dollars per month so the annuity coming inwards is five hundred dollars all right okay let's let's now have a look at this particular examples all right remember there's two things over here i want you to follow two numbering systems over here firstly there's a numbering system with regard to problem number do you notice there's a something called a problem number right and if you look at it if you go back we've done problem one two three four those are in class examples in class exercises now these are examples to build the concept now let's look at example number one in the topic of annuity now example number one you deposit five hundred dollars in a bank at the end of each year for five years all right so five hundred dollars you deposit at the end of each year okay that's fine now the bank pays you five percent interest compounded annually right this is the key word here it is compounded annually which means the bank pays you interest when when does the bank pay you interest John when will the bank pay you interest when it says compounded annually anyone Krish after five years no no when it's compounded when it's compounded annually that means every year the bank will pay the five percent at the end of each year all right okay uh now how much the question immediately after the fifth deposit how much can you withdraw from your account now guys let me just switch over and show you uh let me let me introduce you this topic uh, this thing uh, i mean uh, this new formula f given a all right this is the terminology this is the notation right this is we say find f find the future value what are we looking for over here we are looking for the amount of money which will be withdrawn from the account in five years time okay we are trying to find out what will be the amount withdrawn from the bank in five years time so what is that that's the future value future value letter f and you are given in a what is your annuity it's five hundred dollars your annuity your regular interval payment is five hundred dollars and uh, f given a this is the particular i want you to note that that's the particular notation and the way we write it is f slash a and this is the formula this is how we this is how we write that is the appropriate way of how we use this notation in engineering economics okay we write this particular notation f slash a comma one i percent which is the interest rate on an annual basis comma n n is number of compounding periods okay all right i is the interest period relative to that compounding period okay all right guys any questions now i want to show you some formulas right let's let's uh, before we go and do this formula 
Now, there will be a formula sheet which will be given to you. I've just copied and pasted this formula sheet onto our screen today so that I don't need to flip. But there is an entire formula sheet. Let's, let's have a look at some of these particular formulas, all right? Now, hang on. Let me just uh, uh, switch my screen share. I'm going to switch my screen share to the Moodle shell. Okay, now let me just share the screen. Sorry, apologies. Let me share the screen. All right, there we go, guys. Okay, let me show you the formula sheet. Where is the formula sheet available? Are you able to see my um, Moodle shell? Can you just confirm that very quickly? Yes, sir. All right, thank you. Okay. If you go down to week number, if you go, if you go on the side, you go click on this. If you go down to quick week number nine, right? Click on the side of here, week number nine. It says engineering economics formula sheet. Now in your exam situation, this formula sheet will be given. All right. By the way, I mean, it's going to be an online exam anyway. So you will have access to all the formula sheets, right? And last year when it was a face to face examination, these formula sheets were given. Right, let me get, let me show you some of the other ones which you are familiar with. Single payment compound amount to find F given P, right? If you find, this is like, if you want to find the future value given the present value, P stands for present value. To find the future value given the present value, the, the, the notation is this, F slash P comma I percent comma n where n is the compounding period and uh, number of compounding periods and i is the percentage interest for each compounding period remember if n is in month and i is in month you don't need to do any further conversions so this is one plus i to the power of n all right okay p given f if you want to find p right find the present value given the future value what do we call this formula we call it discounting See, 1 plus i to the power of minus n. Isn't that 1 over 1 plus i to the power of n? Right? So the four which we will deal with today is the a given f, a given p. This is to find the annuity given the future value. This is to find the annuity given the present value. This is to find the future value given annuity. To find the present value given annuity. All right. Let me show you this. Okay, guys. Uh, let me let me stop the sharing and switch over again to my my word document there we are okay word document is online now okay um, right now let's look at this question here you what have you been given guys what have you been given you've been given before this step here, what have you been given? You have been given, what do you know? Knowns. What are our knowns? Known variables. What are our known variables? Well, our known is you deposit $500 at the end of each year. What is that? That is your A. Right? That is your A, which is? Five hundred dollars, okay. And what else? What else is known? What is what else is known, guys? From the question, just look at the blue part. The blue part is the question. What else is known? Anything else? We know. Yes. All right. We know that I is equal to is equal to five percent interest per annum. 5% interest per annum. Usually, if it doesn't say it, we assume that it's per annum. Okay? All right. Okay. So, this guy is asking me a question. Let me answer his question. Uh, Amit is saying, is that A or P? That is A. Why is it A? Because can you see you are making a regular deposit every 
so often. So let me draw the diagram for you. I would like to draw the diagram. Hang on. Um, let me draw the diagram. Okay, there we go. So. Okay. Okay, so we draw our timeline. We draw our timeline, right? And then we have zero, one, two, three, four, five. This is now. This is now our or what do you call our uh, our cash flow diagram. So this is zero, one. Two, three, four, five. Okay, all right. So that's our cash flow diagram. That's our timeline. Why did it stop at five, guys? Because the question says that he's going to make his withdrawal at the end of the fifth year. Okay, he's going to make his withdrawal at the end of the fifth year. Okay. All right. Now, um, he's going to make a deposit of, he's going to make a deposit of how much? Of $500, right? So every year he's making a deposit of $500. So what we do is, the technique is, uh, you can draw a line, right? You can draw a line, right? From there to that point. And then you can draw arrows. And even if those arrows are not so, so accurate, even if those arrows are not so accurate, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Okay, there we go. I hope you are drawing your thing with me right now. Okay, so that's our five uh, things. Um, all right, now, so this is our cash flow diagram. It's still not complete. One part is still left. We then have him making a withdrawal on the fifth, fifth year, right? And that withdrawal is known as the future value, right? That is the future value, right? Okay, and there's a bit of a problem. I made the thing too large. Okay, now... Um, there we go. Okay, so this is the this is the particular problem which we which we are faced with. All right. Um, now the next part is let me just let let me let me just clear the board right let me just clear the board guys okay and i will insert that uh, over here Okay, nice. Well, neat enough. Okay. All right. Now, that is the cash flow diagram. For every question from now on, you have to have your cash flow diagram. Otherwise, 
you will come into a situation where it'll be difficult. So we want to calculate future value, all right? Okay, so that's F given A. The formula, where have I brought the formula from? Well, the formula comes from here, all right? Now, remember, we are engineering students. We don't really need to learn the proof of these formulas, even though a proof is available, but we don't really need to learn the proof, okay? All right, so let's now go ahead and do this particular problem. All right, so let's now go ahead and do this problem. Now, A, what is our annuity, guys? Annuity is 500. I forgot to mention that 500 over here, right? I forgot to mention that. I'll edit that later on. Uh, what is our I in this case? Can somebody tell me the I? I is 5%, 0.05, right? I is 0 0.005. And uh, what we have as our number of years, guys, it's... Five, therefore, what can you tell me is the answer? What is the annuity? What is the future value on the fifth year? How much will this person withdraw? Anyone? Come on, guys! I need to have you you to have your calculator up and ready. One zero two five. Really? One how much did you say? Can you put that in the chat box, please? Can you put the answer in the chat box? You can call it out, but put put the answer. Let's see. Come on guys. Right, I meet uh, two thousand, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right, that's right. Te Pepe. Okay. So it's simple. It's If you look at it, you know, after all the heavy duty kind of calculations which we've been doing in our, in our particular studies of engineering, this is like a walk in the park, you know. All it is is plug and play. So the course in itself is very simple. But understanding the course and then, uh, and then uh, bringing it to this, uh, you know, level, like your marks in your final exam will be given for all this. How you draw your cash flow diagram, whether you apply the right formula or not. All right, let's move on to the next problem. All right, I don't want to, uh, I don't want to waste so much time in talking about how easy the course is if we're not able to cover the content. Okay. All right, let's have a look at Tommy. Tommy wants to buy. By the way, guys, any questions? Any questions for example number one? I forgot to do some editing here, but I'll uh, to write annuity equals five a equals five hundred. You have to write just below this line. You have to write a equals five hundred. Okay, right, guys. Next, next question. Uh, Tommy wants to buy a hi-fi radio, a hi-fi radio for one thousand dollars, right? Okay. Uh, Tommy wants to buy a hi-fi radio for one thousand dollars. Okay. Um, Tommy has decided to save a uniform amount at the end of each month so that he will have the required one thousand dollars at the end of one year. Right, the local credit union pays and pays a six percent interest. Pays pay six percent interest per annum, right? But compounded monthly, right? See this sentence, this sentence, guys. If the local credit union pays six percent interest per annum, but compounded monthly, how much does Tommy? Have to deposit each month. All right. What are our knowns, guys? Tell me. What are our knowns? Our thousand dollars. What can you tell me about the thousand dollars? Is that the future value or is it the present value? Is he buying it now or is he buying that in the future? Future value. Future value. Thank you. That is future value. Yes. Very good. Right. Now. Um, and you decide. Um, our interest rate is this is the catch part this is the tricky part our interest rate is equal to 6% but per annum but compounded monthly compounded monthly alright now there's a catch over here it's compounded monthly. 
all right okay now let's have a look at this thing here guys let's now roll back and have a look at problem number four from week nine do you remember this particular problem we did suppose the savings account pays six percent interest compounded quarterly that six percent interest is per annum but the compounding is done quarterly right that means the bank when it's compounded this particular word it means that even though the rate is given in terms of per annum the compounding rate is the compounding rate is on a on a quarterly basis so what do we did we have to do we have to convert the per annum to quarterly and then find the number of intervals all right okay so let's now have a look at this problem here similar thing all right so it's one thousand dollars six percent compounded annually now let's now have a look at i so i would become i would become how much guys six percent divided by 12 why because of the 12 months right which is equal to how much guys zero point zero point five percent right zero point five percent per month now how many intervals what can you tell me about the n n would equal to guys how many compounding periods how many compounding periods n will equal to if it's done on a monthly basis n is on a okay. monthly basis which is equal to 12 right okay so n is equal to 12 now i we have uh, calculated the new i so now what do we have to do guys what I, what is the question asking us it is asking us how much does tommy have to deposit each month how much does tommy have to deposit each month so what does that mean that is talking about that is talking about our annuity right now where do we get this formula we have to find annuity given f because we know future value right we know future value which is f right and we have to find a what is the formula well the formula the way to write it this is the proper notation find a given f the notation is a is equal to f times this particular thing find a given f at i percent right at i percent and in n intervals so so where do we pick up that formula from well the formula is given in the formula sheet it's already on moodle the whole pdf uh, and you can print it and keep it with you for lecture purposes so that we don't have to refer that okay find a given f this is the formula all right okay so let's now go ahead and do this guy okay so we have to find a all right so find a given f what is our f guys Can somebody tell me our F in this case? It's 1,000. Let me, oh, guys, before we continue, let me just draw the cash flow diagram for you so that, you know, those of you who quite did not understand what we are talking about. All right. Let's go ahead and draw the cash flow diagram. So uh, this is one year, right? That's zero, one, two, three, four, five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve right one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve now what is he saying he's saying that um we have to save money right we have to save money to uh, withdraw okay so he's going to deposit money into 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 the particular into the particular um, um, thing. Let me just put some timeline here. Let's, I won't label all of them. I'll say that is zero, and I'll say this is twelve. All right, everyone is on board and understands what I'm doing over here. This is zero, and that is twelve. Okay, and then what we do is we just put an arrow downwards, a few arrows downwards. Why? Because he's sort of depositing 
into the credit union okay he he's sort of depositing into the credit union to save up to save up for the particular thing so we put that there then we say an annuity an annuity of what is the annuity equal to per month annuity per month right okay annuity per month okay so this, this is two second month this is fourth month okay this is sixth month okay eight this is ninth month all right guys so that is the annuity and then in the end he wants to have saved enough money he wants to have saved enough money so that he can pick up something okay he wants to pick up uh he wants to save the target value is how much is the target guys he wants to save one thousand dollars right he wants to save one thousand dollars okay all right now okay so what is the interest rate guys interest rate is what do we use here we will use 0.5 percent where did the 0.5 percent come from well because we had to split that six percent into 12 months all right so what do we get here it'll be it'll be 0 0.005 0 0.005 and what is the compounding because it's compounded 12 months right so what do we get guys what do we get yes thank you so we round it off to 81 dollars seven cents thank you right 81 dollars seven cents okay um there we go that's done that's that's answer so if this guy mr tommy if this guy tom uh let me just uh, clear this thing up because it will slide like this uh if this person uh, tom he um um if if he if he um uh, saves Eighty-one dollars seven cents per month, right? If he saves eighty-one dollars seven cents per month and deposits it into the local credit union, which is giving him six percent interest per annum, right? Compounded monthly, he will have one thousand dollars at the end of the year, right? He will have one thousand dollars at the end of the year with which he can buy the hi-fi radio. Hopefully, the price of the radio doesn't go up at that point in time. All right, okay okay let's uh, let me just uh, insert that image in for you guys is this the one yeah it is the one all right there it is. i'll clean all this up guys uh but you know at least if you are if you are watching the video if you are watching the uh, the lecture session live uh, you even if you're watching it recorded and you're not just skipping through the recordings i know a lot of times uh, students they just skip through the recordings they just watch whenever there's something new written on the slide uh, then uh, you know then then you will then then you might get confused with the diagram right so that, that's that's the answer for question example example number 2 all right please note how we are writing our our notation guys this is important right we have to find a given f right okay that is that notation is very important All right let's move on to the uh, on to the next question All right let's move on to the next question All right example 3 all right an energy efficient machine costs $5000 and had a life of 5 years right so and should have i think and uh, 
energy efficient and has a life of five years. If the interest rate is 8%, how much must be saved every year to recover the cost? So let us say you buy a new, uh, uh, some kind of new machine which saves energy. Let's say it's a Toyota Prius or something like that, right? And it saves you, it's saving you energy, right? Which is, uh, you know, which is the main reason why you are buying that particular machine, right? And you know that this will give up in five years time. So how do we how do we handle this? How do we do this particular problem? Uh, how much must it save every year in order for it to pay itself off, right? To recover the capital invested. Okay. So let's let's see what is given. So this uh, particular thing is uh, if you go back here, I've just copied again. These are the four places where A is given. So uniform series sinking fund is from A given to F. From find A given F. Capital recovery is A given P. Uniform series compound amount is F given A. Find F given A. Uniform series present worth is find P given A. All right, guys. Now, let's let's see what is given. What is known? Okay. Our known. Let's see. What is known, guys? We know that um, the... Uh, we know that our present value right is equal to our present value is equal to 5000 why is it present value well that's the amount of money you have to spend now you have to spend that amount now okay now we know our interest is equal to 8% and that's given per annum why do we know that it's per annum well simply because when nothing is stated about the interest rate we assume that it is per annum all right and we know that uh, because it is not per annum and the useful life is five years our number of compounding period is five okay so let's now go ahead and draw the cash flow diagram let's now go ahead and and what we have to do we have to find we have to find a we have to find a let's draw our cash flow diagram guys Okay, let me turn on this thing here. Okay, and I am. So it's got to. Okay, that's our cash flow. So in the beginning, zero, one, two, three, four, five. Right? Let's now just put the timestamps over there. Zero. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, now. What is the machine doing? It's saving you some money, right? We want to know what the savings are on an annual, on a annual basis. So, what is savings? Is savings a income or is that an expense, guys? Saving is an income. So, we will point the arrow upwards. Point the arrow upwards. We draw a line to indicate that that is an annuity. When you draw a line like that, that indicates that that is an annuity all right okay so we have an annuity and we put down that the amount of the annuity is equal to uh is unknown we have to find out what is the annuity what is the savings the savings which basically becomes the annuity is what what is the what is that all right okay Originally, you will recall that they spent, how much did they spend, guys? How much did they spend? They spent, um, they spent, how much? They spent $5,000, right? They spent $5,000, which is the present value, right? Okay, so we have to find out what should the annuity be right what should be the annuity given you've got an interest rate of eight percent what should the annuity be all right 
Okay. Okay, so let me just uh, save that over there. Okay, and let me clear this. Uh, And insert that very quickly. All right. In real life, guys, however, in real life, what can you tell me in real life? What is something which will happen over here? Can you tell me, can somebody, does anybody have an idea what is missing in this cash flow diagram which will happen in real life? Yeah, there will be, that's right, Amit, you're right. There will be some maintenance costs, right? So, in fact, the savings has got to be much higher because it's got to pay for, cater for maintenance costs. Also, uh, Amit, uh, the other thing in, uh, in class is that in real life, at the end of the five years, we usually sell the used machine as second hand. We sell the machine as second hand. Maybe it might fetch us one thousand dollars. What do you call that? At the end, the fifth end of fifth year, we sell it for five one thousand dollars. And uh, what do we call that value? What do we call that value? Salvage value. Thank you so much. Salvage value. All right. All right. So what are we doing? We we are, we know we find A, and we have to we've given T. So we have to use a given P, right? Where do we get the formula? Well, it's the same formula sheet which has been supplied, all right? Okay, A given P. Okay, now, what is our P, guys? P is $5,000. What is our A? A is 0 0.08, right? And our A is 0 0.008. And what is our N, guys? What is our N? N is... How many years? Five years. Our N is five years. And that our I is 0 0.008. Our N is five years. All right. Okay. And what value do we get, guys? What is the savings which must be made by the machine? Thank you, Mr. All right. Okay. There we go. That's the thing. Right. Any questions, guys? Any questions before we move on to our next question, which might be our next problem, which will be the last problem for the day. Maybe the last problem, hopefully. Okay. All right. Let's look at problem number six. Any questions, guys? I'm just going to pause here for one minute just to let you guys absorb that in. Okay, now, remember, we started problem 6 last week. We had started problem 6, and then somewhere along the line, we said, hey, uh, our, our time ran out. Let's now complete problem 6. Now that you've done example 1, example 2, and example 3 in relation to annuity, we are now in a better position to counter problem 6. Okay, we're now in a better position to counter problem number 6. Now, problem six. Suppose you make $500 monthly deposits to a savings account that pays an interest rate of 10% compounded quarterly. Find the balance of the account at the end of 10 years. Okay, find the balance of the account at the end of 10 years. How many remember this? Okay. Uh, firstly, Maybe, maybe I need to redraw this again. Let me redraw this again. All right. Okay. So let's now make a uh, let's now make a diagram. Let's now make a diagram. Our cash flow diagram. I'm going to do deliberately something like this. Now, look at the question. It says compounded quarterly. 
it is compounded quarterly right so uh, let's now look at it from the point of view of uh, and this guy but it's compounded quarterly which means every three months but how, how, when is he doing his deposits is depositing it monthly he's making monthly deposits All right, so let's have a look at this. So if he's making monthly deposits, and in 10 years, how many months will there be? Yeah, I mean, I'm not checking you guys' answer. I'm hoping that the other students are also checking the answer. Okay, okay, let's roll back, let's roll back. Uh, let's roll back over here. So what? amount is this uh, can somebody give me an answer confirmation as to what amount what is the correct answer over here guys okay thank you i'm just i'm just doing the problem live guys i, I didn't come prepare I, i'm not uh, the problems are there but uh this these these things are all done live all right okay okay now suppose you make 500 dollars monthly deposits now let's have a look at this now we have So we'll have zero, right? We have one, okay, two, okay, and these are in months, three, and over here you have 120, you have 119, you have 118, and so forth. And that particular symbol, this is the cash flow diagram symbol of a situation whereby a cash flow diagram situation uh, of, of a situation whereby our particular you know number line you can't be drawing 120 120 uh, uh, what do you call um, you, it will be very difficult for us to draw a cash flow diagram of 120 percent I mean 120 months so what we do is we break it up that that particular symbol Right, that particular symbol. Okay, now uh, we want to we want to uh, show that we were making monthly deposits. We're making monthly deposits of how much? We were making monthly deposits of five hundred dollars per month. All right, we were making monthly deposits of five hundred dollars per month. Okay. All right. Okay, and. In order to show that these annuities were all the same, we put a line there, okay, and we put and we put something called this thing here, okay. We now show that your annuity of A is equal to five hundred dollars per month. Mm, all right, and uh, basically the question was, what is, what is the future, what is the future value, what is the future value, future value at ten years? Okay, all right. Now there's a catch, guys. There's a catch. What's the catch? Well, the catch is that uh, the catch is that it is um, what do you call um, that that the particular question specifically says that it is compounded quarterly. That this thing is compounded quarterly. So what do we have to do? We have to now convert that. We have to now convert this particular cash flow diagram from a monthly cash flow diagram we have to convert this particular cash flow diagram from a monthly cash flow diagram into a quarterly cash flow diagram we have to convert to a quarterly cash flow diagram so that's what we've got to write it down over here so we've got to convert convert from monthly cash flow 
to a quarterly cash flow all right okay now how will we do this and remember monthly cash flow it was uh, saying 10% compounded quarterly right so in this problem we assume that it is 10% uh, per annum so let's see what our knowns are our knowns okay our knowns what is our knowns what are our knowns our knowns is that our annuity is equal to what annuity is $500 per month right what else what else do we know that our interest rate is equal to 10% per annum but compounded compounded quarterly compounded quarterly and our time which is not n is equals to 10 years right so from that we can now calculate we can now calculate certain things Okay. All right. Now let's just insert our cash flow diagram here. Okay. Now we have put that down there. Okay. Here. Radio. There we are, right? So this represents that. But now we have to, what, what does the question say? We have to convert our question, convert from monthly cash flow into a quarterly cash flow. Right, let's now draw this table. The table which we drew earlier on when we were solving the uh, particular problem. We have to do some conversions. In order to convert, in order to convert, we have to, um, in order to convert, we have to, um, you know, uh, we, we, we have to draw this table up. So in this case, you have annuity, right, which is at $500 per month, right, okay, and um, what else do we have, guys? You have your interest rate, which is 10% per annum, right? Which is equal to, which is equal to 0 0.1. Is it 10% guys? Yes, it's 10%, right? But it is compounded quarterly. So our M is equals to quarter. Now our length of time is equals to 10 years, right? 10 years in terms of months, in terms of months, that was equal to, Right, because we've got to bring it into a monthly fashion. Right, we've got to bring it into a monthly fashion. Right, now 10 years, which is equal to 120 months. Okay, we've got to bring it into a 120 months now. Let's now do some further conversions. Now, M is quarterly. Right, okay, now our annuity, what does our annuity become then? When we convert it to quarterly, so this was in the month, maybe I insert a column to the left, and this is the time frame, time frame. This time frame is under the monthly situation, and this time frame is under the quarterly situation. This time frame is under the quarterly situation, okay? All right. Okay, now, what would be the annuity be in this case? What would be the annuity be? Annuity per, per, per quarter. What would the annuity, yes, thank you. Yeah, correct. The annuity will be equal to uh, $500 per 
multiplied by five hundred dollars multiplied by three where did you get the three from well because it's three months per quarter right okay which is equal to fifteen hundred dollars right so that's our new a all right now our rate our rate was 10 percent we've got to divide it by four quarters which gives us what 2.5 percent which is 0 0.025 okay 0 0.025 now uh, our number of intervals our n our n used to equal to our n used to equal to 120 months right but we've got to bring it down so now our new n in the quarterly situation will be 120 divided by it'll be 120 divided by sorry it used to be 10 years let me put it this way let me put it put, put, sim, 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 simpler method right it was let's not we can even calculate it using the month it's 10 years which is equals to 10 times four quarters right four quarters right four quarters which is equal to what what do we get uh 40 quarters 40 quarters there we go all right so that's our new problem that's our new problem we now draw another cash flow diagram we now draw another cash flow diagram with these variables right we draw another cash flow diagram with these variables now right so our n is equal to that okay now another cash flow diagram actually i'm getting tired of these cash flow diagrams but the whole course everything you'll be doing is along the lines of cash flow diagrams okay so let's put a little break there so that we don't have to draw absolutely everything you just draw one two three and then i think okay you can draw four as well one two three four when we used to do it on the document camera it used to be much more uh much neater I, 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 you know well uh, that's that's, uh, that's what i hope anyway um let's put a red down 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 okay and we connect it up okay guys um um i think uh, uh, we've run out of time nobody mentioned the time to me all right we've run out of time we'll stop over there and we will continue this problem at 10 o'clock in the morning tomorrow we've got a lecture yeah okay we'll continue this problem tomorrow morning thank you so much uh, for attending and i will be putting up a notice with regards to uh, your assignment, which will be lecture transcript and tutorial uh, submission assignments. Okay, thank you. Thank you. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow morning. It's five o'clock. I will be uploading this lecture very shortly. Thank you so much. Goodbye. I will be staying around uh, for a few minutes if you wish to.